sensing all your movements. And as you start to increase your range of motion, your strength, your precision of movement, these sorts of metrics that we can record, it's going to detect that. And it's going to try to make suggestions to continue to amplify those bits of progress. And so in that case, it's very personalized insofar as it's going to watch how you're performing, take the things that you're doing well, um, and try to figure out, okay, what things are driving that? Well, let's push those harder. Hey, everyone. My name is Dr. Nick Housey with Modus Nova. I'm a licensed neurophysical therapist and neuroscientist helping brain injury survivors understand how to make functional gains after their injury. I hope this video helps you in your recovery. Um, just so I can know a little bit more about you, would you mind telling me about who you are and where you're calling from? Oh, sure. Um, I'm calling from um, Washington State, the southeastern part of Washington State, where it's very hot right now. And um, yeah, I'm, um, you know, a younger stroke survivor, um, 11 years post and single mom. And yeah, I'm okay. just finishing up grad school. So. Ooh, Kim, what are you studying? Social work. Social work. Okay. There are not enough social workers out there in the world. And so I'm glad there's another one out there um, or soon to be at the one out there. Um, how's that journey been for you? Um, good, really good. Um, I mean, just, yeah, good. I had to push out graduation one semester because of COVID because I couldn't find an internship because of the pandemic. Um, but now I'm in my final internship and it's virtual. And so it's, yeah, it's almost over. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Very good. Well, um, congratulations on, um, on completing that. It's a very, very important, um, position in the healthcare field. So very, very glad that you were there and, and going to contribute to that. Um, and so actually I'm a little bit interested. I'm, I'm a little bit going to ask some selfish questions here. If you don't mind me asking, um, what's been your experience so far? Have you been working in the hospital outpatient settings? What's been your primary area? Oh, well, I haven't, <laughs> you know, as the, I'm a career changer. So, um, okay, sure. you know, really, um, my first internship was in a hospital, um, okay. which was, it kind of ended up just being discharge planning, like case management. Yep. Um, this one is with an employee assistance program. So it's very, okay. you know, people call in, it's very brief. They only get between one and three sessions. So mm -hmm. it's very solution focused. Um, okay. you know, counseling and therapy. Um, yeah. And I'm, you know, I did the, what they consider the integrated track for my program. So focusing both on clinical stuff, working directly with people, but also macro social work, like community work and policy work and things like that. Very, um, very, very holistic. Okay. Yeah. And so I honestly haven't really done it yet. <laughs> sure. That's okay. Well, it's, it's, uh, it's called practice for a reason, right? <laughs> Very good. Well, okay. So I think you, you mentioned that you are a stroke survivor, 11 years post injury. Um, tell me about your experience with your own recovery then. Tell me um, how that started for you and, and what's, what you've been doing since then. Sure. I mean, I did, you know, in the very beginning, I think I was five weeks in inpatient rehab. Okay. Um, and at the end of that, I still couldn't transfer independently from the bed to the wheelchair or anywhere else. Um, then I did six months of outpatient PT and OT, um, probably between two and three times a week. I, it was so long ago now, I don't I totally remember. And then I was kind of like booted out of that because I don't know, I guess I just sort of came to the end of my insurance. Um, and then I was kind of just floating around and then I just started going on my own to other clinics for PT and OT, but it got to the point where, um, you know, really I was only going once a month because with co-pays, that's all I could afford. Um, and as much as I, you know, have intended to do things at home on my own, it just doesn't end up that way. Um, it's, I just don't have the time or I don't figure out a way to make the time. Um, so, you know, kind of, I don't know if this how, is how it goes for everyone, but in the beginning, of course, recovery came in like leaps and bounds. Um, and then, you know, now of course, it, and then it sort of slows down and it's all very incremental. But even now I, you know, if I do practice, I notice, I notice improvements. I notice differences all the yeah. time. So, and um, I just kind of stumbled onto this. Um, I was looking for something else online the other night 
And um, this just seems like kind of an amazing way to, you know, get all the repetitions into, you know, one of my first PTs would always say, you have to do it 10,000 times. You have to do it 10,000 times. That's, that's just the only way you can make gains. Hey, if you're finding this video helpful, please hit like and subscribe to help other brain injury survivors learn how Modus Nova is changing neuro rehab. So. Yeah. Okay, very good. Yeah, I think um, really like your sentiment. I very much appreciate understanding where you're coming from as well. Like, that's quite helpful. Um, I think your, your experience is very, unfortunately, very uh, similar across many stroke survivors insofar as you kind of exhaust a standard path. And, you know, in most cases, vast majority of people do not reach their maximum medical recovery because of that, um, because of insurance and limitations and all these sorts of things. So I think um, I'm really glad that you kind of um, found some of these alternative approaches. And so I think it, it really depends on uh, kind of where you are right now in terms of the type of functional abilities you have and what type of things you might um, want to focus on. So um, would you mind maybe just expanding a little bit on terms of what's still challenging you and what type of things would you like to get out of a, um, a system like this? Um, it's, so as far as walking, I mean, I, so I have pretty major vestibular issues and, um, mm -hmm. I was speaking to a rep earlier on the phone today um, for you guys, and, and I was asking if, you know, can using the foot apparatus help with the vestibular issues? And, you know, he explained that it can't help directly, but it can help indirectly just because, you know, through repetition and sort of training your brain um, that this is how you do it. One, one of my main problems is, and I think this is probably pretty typical for people, um, you know, I, I hesitate to put weight on that affected side. Um, and, you know, when I overcompensate and, you know, and then also for me, it's, it's not, you know, it's difficult to place my foot exactly where I would want it. Yep. Um, and then, you know, as far as the hand, I, I mean, I've got, you know, pretty good, I don't know what percentage I would give it, you know, what, a, you know, functionality that I have, but, you know, I, you know, it's hard to, I can't really carry a glass of water across the living room. Let's put it that way, you know, okay. without okay. spilling it all over the place or dropping it, sure. those types of things. Um, and I, you know, I do of course use my good hand way too often um, because I'm always in a hurry because, you know, yeah, I could try and like unload the dishwasher mm -hmm. you know, solely with my affected hand. But, you know, in reality, I just I, I need to get things done because I don't sure. have all the time in the world to to do that, sure. um, which. Is, yeah. Yeah. No, no, so uh, that... there's, there's there's zero judgment here in this in this world, Kim. So don't worry. Uh, don't worry about that at all. I think all of us appreciate your perspective and um, can understand the struggles of trying to integrate rehab into your daily life and it's like well it also what happens when i drop the plates well now i got to go make another trip to the ikea to get more plates or whatever right um so yeah you, you, everything stops you have to clean it all yeah. up yeah yep. and i'm tired yep. i'm tired of losing glasses <laughs> i'm trying to tired of losing plates yeah. um well i had been going you know until really until um covid hit i i've since moved and well not since covid but I had been going back to PT and OT, you know, pretty regularly, like maybe once a week, twice a week, but um, it's still just not enough. And mm -hmm. one of my PTs who's really good, I mean, everyone I've seen has been beneficial in some way. Like it, I know it all matters, um, but one of my PTs, you know, last year said, well, I think maybe you just get to a point where you just don't recover beyond that. And my my thought was, well, I don't know, maybe with conventional PT and OT, that's the case. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, Kim, I think this is this is really important to mention too that it's this is a it, this is a really important one. And you would think that if it's such an important question and that science would have answered this yet uh, by this point. And truth be told, is there are very few instances when individuals who have um, uh, who are stroke survivors have been pushed sufficiently hard to actually get to like a real ceiling, a true ceiling. 
Um, and, and what I mean by that, and some, some scientists may come back and say, well, yeah, we have done that. And it's like, well, maybe you have, but the problem is most clinical studies are limited to three month period, three month epochs. And we, we all know that recovery can take much longer than that. And so, yeah, maybe, maybe six hours of therapy a day is going to be a saturated response or anything more than that. It's going to be, you're not going to get any benefit from it or potentially even some um, negative effects. Um, but what happens when you extend that three month period to maybe six months, nine months, a year, what happens then? Are we able to then continually progress? And those questions just haven't been answered yet, just because the way that unfortunately science is funded. And so I think um, to your point exactly, maybe these conventional approaches, the, con the sort of constraints that are applied to conventional rehab approaches kind of limit the maximum med medical recovery that any individual person can take. And this is, you know, this is my contention uh, as a scientist looking at the data as also someone who's been involved with these sort of technological solutions to try to help circumvent those problems, those limitations. So I very much resonate with that perspective. And so, you know, truth be told is we also don't know a whole lot about the individual determinants, right? Maybe you are a very good responder to certain things um, and you may need X, Y, Z type of, of rehab. And, and in those cases, it's going to be even harder to get the information just because of the, the complexities of, of trying to parse that, scientifically speaking. Um, so the better thing to do is to try to optimize on some outcome. And this is what the algorithms actually look for, um, right? Because you're using the machine, you're using the, the motor scan, it's a robotic system that goes on you. And it's sensing all your movements. And as you start to increase your range of motion, your strength, your precision of movement, these sorts of metrics that we can record, it's going to detect that. And it's going to try to make suggestions to continue to amplify those bits of progress. And so in that case, it's very personalized insofar as it's going to watch how you're performing, take the things that you're doing well, um, and try to figure out, okay, what things are driving that? Well, let's push those harder um, to, to, again, to ultimately sort of um, maximize a medical recovery. So, so very much resonating with, with your perspective there, Kim. Um, you were also talking about sort of the, the hesitancy of, during gait. I think that's um, you know a combination of things, right? You, of course, vestibular systems, very, very complex. And I hope you're actually doing vestibular rehab. Um, I've actually done a bit of this myself. Um, so I'm a traumatic brain injury survivor and I've done a fair bit of, of vestibular rehab because that's where my, a lot of my deficits were too. So um, I think we should very much look into some of those options to do vestibular rehab. Um, it can be very, very um, effective. I've, I've seen personally a lot of, of benefits um, from that. But in terms of the confidence of the lower extremity help, um, modus foot is really good about sort of helping developing proprioceptive control. So being able to kind of negotiate the sort of sensory and the motor aspects of the, of the foot um, and the ankle, really, really important for balance. Something like that could help sort of give you some more confidence and more stability. Um, during your gait. So the one thing I would recommend though, is to not bite off too much, right? You've already mentioned that you're super busy, you get ready for a career um, transition change to go into um, social work formally. So I think the best thing to probably do is if you were to proceed something like this, start with one and let's see if we can integrate that into your, your sort of course of, of self-care and then um, take the next steps maybe, you know, potentially considering um, uh, doing both or maybe doing one after the other, these sorts of things. So that would be kind of the recommendation. But um, do you have any sort of questions for me about how the systems work? I'm happy to go into any details. Thanks for watching this video. If you have questions or would like to speak with me about how you can make functional gains from home, call or text me at 404-939-3476 or visit modusnova.com slash contact.